Hello and welcome to the English Martial Arts Podcast Show. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the English Martial Arts Podcast Show. I love them a lot. So here we are in sunny London town, and the weather is beautiful out there. And what are we going to talk about today? Well, maybe a bit of everything, because there's so much to do in the martial arts, and there's so much to do in the Western martial arts, and there's so much to talk about and discuss. I mean, firstly, they were intended as combat arts for war and personal self defense. Of course. I mean, in the times when martial arts were used, hand to hand weapons were used all the time, I wouldn't imagine it was very much more violent than it is now on the streets of London. But at least you had the legal right to carry them and defend yourself, unlike today, where you have to wait to be stabbed before the police will do anything. And they'll only do anything if、uh, they feel that it's politically correct rather than what's right. But the times we live in, eh? Well, what more can we do? We can learn to defend ourselves and we can defend ourselves. And then we'll pay the price for it afterwards. But I'd rather pay the price for it afterwards. You know, better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6, as they say.、Oh, due to work、um, and other things in my life at the moment, I haven't been out of train for three weeks. And it's really getting to me. It's bugging me. You know, when you don't train, you get that irritable feeling and you start to feel、like、little aches and pains where you haven't been able to, to get out there and do anything. It's. It really is a bugbear, but you know, these things happen and I'll probably be back soon.、Um, I haven't been teaching either for a, that amount of weeks because of the, the same thing, really. But I'm going to get back into it now. The summer's really, really taking off.、Um, I'm going to be doing plenty of training in the parks,、um, teaching a lot, and doing other things as well, and bringing forward the lesser known weapons of the Western martial arts. You know, especially things like the thresholds and the pitchfork and the court staff, things like that,、um, silver's dagger, et cetera, so that we can sort of show everybody that there's so much more to the Western martial arts than just swords. And although swords are great and we all love them and we all want to own them and blah, 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 and some people dedicate their lives to. Using long swords in combat and teaching it, blah, 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 again. But, you know, there's so much more to it. So much more to the Western martial arts. And I'm going to be bringing those things forward the, the lesser known weapons and more unarmed. So that we can show that our martial arts are as good and as tough as any that come from the East. I'm also going to be. Doing a lot more with the sex and using the sex in a way that、um, a modern knife fighter, or if there is such a thing, would use it. The way that a sex could be used close range and medium range, because using all sides of the sex the sharp blade, the back edge, the, the butt of the handle, the point so that the, it shows you the complete system of using a weapon like that. And it shows you how devastating a weapon like that is when used for close and medium range combat. Although we won't be neglecting all the real good classical weapons, such as the, the sword single, cudgel, quarter staff, sword and dagger, and sword and buckler, etc., we'll still be going through them, teaching them,、uh, sparring with them, etc. And, you know, if you come to our club, you get the full curriculum. It is a full curriculum, it's just, not just a mishmash of what. People have read out of books and, you know, silly stuff that people do. We really, really are, have put together a full curriculum from unarmed right up to the longest weapon. So if you want to come along and enjoy a lesson, just come along.、Um, the doors are always open. We're open Tuesdays,、um, Fridays, and Sundays now. So, you know, pop along and we can put something together. Now, as you know, if you listen to the podcast, I talk a lot about. Self defense, because that's where our art is geared towards. We gear our art towards using the old arts, the old English martial arts, in a modern day context of self protection and self defense. 
So our unarmed is from the bare fist and wrestling. You'll find many, many uh, techniques and things inside that, that unarmed art to make it a complete art itself, which it really is. And based on the principles, the principles of the English martial arts, as written down by George Silver, you'll find that it's very, very effective. And we have so much stuff in there that you'll find something for everyone. We go from punching, obviously, elbows, kicking, knees, head butting. We go from chokes, arm locks, leg locks, anything you can think of the Western martial arts and the English system has got it. And it's worth coming along just to try it out, to see what you think. And it really, really is a good unarmed art to take out with you. It arms you really, really well, the, and it's got a long, long, long tradition. Weapons as well. Um, we teach short weapons such as cudgel, um, back sword, uh, knife, sax, short sword, all that kind of stuff, right up to real good classical weapons such as sword and dagger, sword and buckler, the quarter staff, um, all kinds of pole arms, the bill hook, everything. So, you know, a complete art, a complete curriculum, and English to boot. And I would also really, really recommend Terry Brown's book, English Martial Arts, because if you read that, you really get a feel for what, the system is and how the historical people who taught it and learnt it and used it were. You know, it's really, really good. It's the best book on the market. It's been, it was published quite a while ago, but it's still the best book on the market. No one has even come close to the research that went into that. Um, also, there's a few other books out by us, uh, Bare Knuckle Boxing for Beginners, uh, etc. There's one called senior self-defense for people of an age and you know there's a few books on the on the market that we've produced and that we've put out also look at our youtube channel english fighting arts we've got plenty of good stuff on there for you to see and it's just gives you a taster of of what we do and we've got some really good interviews coming up as well i'm not going to say who with but some really good interviews of some really good people from both the western martial arts and the Eastern martial arts as well. So keep your ears open for them, and we'll we'll surprise you with who we've got on. <laughs> and I've just been watching loads of Shaw Brothers uh, videos. Well, not, not videos, I would say, but Shaw Brothers martial art films. They're brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I mean, I watched them years ago when I was a lot younger, but I've just started to catch up on them again, and they're so good, so well choreographed. They're just amazing films. I mean, the Chinese... Um, stuntmen are so good. It's ridiculous. I mean, there's, the choreography is brilliant. So, what's the theme of this podcast, this episode? Well, there ain't one. I've just felt like talking. Uh, talking about anything, really. Um, just what was on my mind. And, I mean, I may do a few more rambling, silly ones like this, but, you know, why not? Oh, yeah, and I went to see Jurassic World the other day. It was all right, didn't rate it that much. All them Jurassic films are a bit soppy, really. Um, not much difference from the ones before. Another man-made dinosaur um, gets beaten up by the raptors, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's really silly, really. But I saw a film called Dark, D-A-R-C. I think it's on Netflix. And that's a film worth watching. Really is good and plenty of action as well. I uh, really, really liked it. Join a few extra groups on Facebook, um, a chivalry group, which is absolutely brilliant. You get a really lot of good people on there that really want to carry forward the original aims of what the martial arts were or the Western martial arts were. It's sort of um, the Western um, equivalent of Budo, which is really good. I mean, I, I enjoy the chivalric side of the martial arts as well, even though I don't do a nightly martial art i can still take on and listen to and you know try and behave in a way that is chivalric even though these days people look at it as a bit silly but you know there are plenty of us that don't you know i met some new people on uh, on the facebook groups one anders linard great bloke really nice bloke um 
suffered a lot through the SJW loonies. Uh, the snowflakes uh, keep melting every time he goes on there. Also, um, there's loads and loads of groups out there that will accept normal thinking people rather than nutters from the left. So it's really worth having a look if you want a, um, a normal, good discussion on the traditional Western martial arts or even the competition side of Western martial arts. You know, away from all the commies and all the wallies that infest HEMA these days. Seen there's loads of marches lately. I mean, the Free Tommy Robinson lot and the DFLA, I think it's called. The amount of marches they've had and, you know, 40,000 here, 30,000 there. Not a mention anywhere, you know, only on social media. And then you get the anti-Brexit march. I think they had about 100,000 people on that one march. And I think that that trumps that they should, we should have another vote because there was 100,000 people on the street. But there were 17.4 million people that voted for Brexit. I mean, you know, ridiculous. Deluded people. Even the politicians that are back them are mental cases. They're committing political suicide because when it comes time to vote for them, people are going to go, no, you're a traitor. They ain't voting for you. I mean, that's Anne Subri's one thing. She's going to get kicked out really soon. She's a nutter. And anyone who thinks Corbyn's going to get in, they are as nutty as a march air. He is a mental case. Commie as well. A proper one. He loves the IRA, Hezbollah, Hamas. He is an absolute 100% loony. Good thing about having your own podcast. You can sort of talk about what you want. <laughs> and today is a day for talking about rubbish and other stuff like, like it. Oh, another thing, I picked up a nice new preamp. It's a 1980s preamp, and uh, as soon as I get it wired up and fixed into the compressor, I'm going to start using it, and it really, really looks good. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it was an army one, I think. Next army one. Yeah, it was. I'm just looking at it now. But it's a, it seems really good. It's in great nick. I'm just going to get it all wired up, and I'm going to start to use it just to see what it sounds like. So that means I'll have then two systems set up and I can choose between them, which uh, I probably will. And also, I've got so many microphones now, I'm going to start swapping them in and out. Uh, so the podcast might sound different from week to week or month to month. At the moment, I'm using a Rode Procaster, which is a really nice mic, but it really suffers from plosives. So I'm using a, a, a two windscreens to um, stop it, one that fits over the mic and one that fits at the pop screen in front of it so that we don't get all those S's and P popping and stuff like that. But apart from that, it's a great broadcast microphone. And I'm running that through a DBX286S that goes into a, I think, a Focusrite 2i2. Um, I've got so much uh, really good gear and the second system is going to be set up soon, so I'll be using that. I mean, podcasting's great. Everyone should have a podcast, right? Sod radio. Who cares about radio? I mean, I listen to it when I'm at work, only because there ain't no live podcast going on at the time. Otherwise, I would. Podcasts are great because you get passionate individuals talking about things that really interest them. And that's the best thing. Bloody commercial radio crap music they play over and over and over again. I mean, there must have been billions of songs written, or I don't know, millions of songs written since... People start, first started writing songs and singing them. They play the same ones over and over again. Yeah, I know they have to, but it's a bit silly, really. Well, I suppose that's enough for today. And the next episode will be a topic of something relevant, unlike this one, to the English martial arts. Thanks for listening. And if you enjoyed this one, please tune in next time. Listen to us, because we listen to you.